Good morning, folks. The solar storm did not disappoint. We've got aurora photos coming in from everywhere, including some shots I got in Colorado Springs. We've got full details, technological impacts, and two great science stories from deep space as well. Let's begin with the last 24 hours on our star. Very quiet. Kind of thankful for that, given how active the geomagnetic conditions were all day. We're still watching the sunspots and that massive plasma filament on the north, but the big story was, of course... CME impact. You can see in the solar wind data, as I said yesterday morning, easily recognizable. The impact amidst the calmer solar wind stream. Moderate density but very fast plasma speed and a magnetic orientation that coupled with Earth's magnetic field and delivered a powerful pressure shock wave to our planet yesterday. It was so easy to see on pretty much every detector, magnetic disruptions began instantly, and the geoelectric induction surged currents through most of the globe. We reached level 4 storm conditions very quickly, and at times, really looked like we were creeping towards KP9, a level 5 storm. While we luckily avoided currents strong enough to take out large-scale grids, we did see the system issues at regional and local scales. They began pretty much all at the exact same time, ranging from power distribution disruption to online service outages and cellular trouble. There was the expected uptick in electrical and transformer fires in the hours that followed, and magnificent pink auroras were seen from Europe to the southern United States. I caught these two shots right before bed here in Colorado Springs, towering pink streaks with green lighting up the lower level clouds as well a fantastic display by our star. Let's go next to deep space, where a very distant galaxy is making some waves in the astronomical community. They say there is the unmistakable and telltale signs that this early galaxy is very well organized, and it's rotating. It isn't all that unusual in the modern and local universe, but back then it wasn't supposed to be that way. Formed too early and got too organized to match the accepted cosmological models. It's another break from the lambda cold dark matter science. Lastly, here on the article front, we're seeing a sodium cloud surrounding an exoplanet, and they figured out it can't possibly be coming from the planet or its nearby star. They're pretty sure it's a volcanic exomoon, like Jupiter's Io. This would be some of the most solid evidence in existence for exomoons and the first detection of them by this method, certainly the first to potentially be volcanic. Very cool. Folks, tomorrow is the garden and foraging event. My Q&A is afterwards at Observer Ranch. Link is below. There's also a link to my 40th birthday, and a sponsor for it has stepped in yesterday and said the next 40 people who register using the promo code BENIS40 will get about 50% off their ticket. That's on October 19th. Links are below, and you can always go book a time to come see us in person at ObserverRanch.com. Can't wait to meet more of you face-to-face. -face. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.